Greetings, this is J.R. Dickey. Thanks for tuning in to our podcast. And by the way, don't forget our website, graceandtruth.net. I hope you're having a great day, but if not, hang with me. It's about to get better. Okay, today we're going to talk about the very special nature of mankind amongst God's creation. Okay, let's get started. From Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, it says, In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, He made him, male and female, he created them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Mankind is unique in all the creation. First of all, only mankind was made in the image of God. And second, the process in which man was developed was unlike that of any other living creature. For the first part, just as God is a triune being, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Man was also originally triune, body, soul, and spirit. That composition is specified in Genesis 2, 7. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, there's the body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, there's the spirit. And man became a living soul, which at any moment is navigated by either of the first two parts. And this composition was not only unique, but it was new. We know this by studying the words used in the first several chapters of Genesis. You see, God both created and or made the various entities found in these chapters. The word for created is pronounced bara, and means made from nothing, something brand new whereas the word for made is pronounced asa, and means not new, but remade or made from pre-existing materials. In the beginning of the Bible, we find the following things were created. Heaven and earth, sea life and birds, and mankind. And the following were made. The sky, sun, moon, and stars, land animals, And again, mankind. You notice that man is in both lists. Adam was made from the dust of the earth, which speaks to the conclusion that his created part was his spirit man, that is, his spirit and soul. Of course, at some point, God created all things, seen and unseen. In other scriptures, we are told that he created the angels and the heavenly host, including Lucifer. You can see Psalms 148.5 and Ezekiel 28.13. But man is the only living creature to be both bara and asa, that is, created and made. He is also said to be formed and built, but that's another lesson. And this uniqueness begs the questions, why, for what purpose? Now, his asa part if I can put it that way, identified him with the physical realm. He was made from the dust of the earth, and his bara part identified him with the spiritual realm. So man was set up as one who could identify with two realms, the seen and unseen, so to speak. Therefore, he was and is a perfect visual aid uniquely positioned in all creation. And he was placed on earth for a grand purpose, for a cosmic purpose. Isaiah said in Isaiah forty-five eighteen, For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, God himself who formed the earth and made it. He has set it up, established it. He did not create it in vain. In other words, to be a desolation. He formed it to be inhabited, or literally sit as a judge. In that last part, the implied meaning of the Hebrew word is indeed inhabited and is an appropriate counterpoint to the word vain. But I suggest that the literal meaning also applies, and perhaps more so. That is, that the earth was set up or staged to be a place of judgment, which implies a place where truth is revealed. It also implies an audience to the judgment or truth displayed. As a part of his divine purpose, mankind is 
the lead player, then, if you would, in this situation, for it is man who has been and is being used to show the cosmos the creative genius of God, his desire for intimate relationship, the value of obedience to him, the consequences of sin, the deceptive, destructive nature of the fallen Satan, as well as God's mercy, justice, and ultimately his gracious sacrifice and redemption. Wow, what an amazing production. A cosmic courtroom, so to speak, where the glorious truth of who God is, his very nature, is displayed. The way, the truth, and the life revealed for all to see. All? Yes, literally all of creation. You see, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 4, nine, For I think that God has set us forth, the apostles, last, as it were, appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle, figuratively a theater, unto the cosmos and to angels and to men. And he also said, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. That's 1 Timothy 3.16. Note in these verses the audience, the cosmos, and angels as well as men. Also note the specific reference to the flesh and the spirit, the asa and bara elements, which Christ the God-man took on to be just like us, more specifically, like the first Adam. Even the Apostle Peter spoke of the gospel, the truth revealed as, quote, the things angels desire to look into, or literally, to stoop down and bend to see, as 1 Peter 1.12. And so, along with Paul, and most preeminently Christ, we as believers are created uniquely for God's preordained plan, his wonderful production, which has led to our redemption. But beyond that, he made us all important parts of a cosmic courtroom, or perhaps classroom, to demonstrate his justice, his mercy, and grace, and certainly his infinite love for all his creation. You mean the host of heaven needs to see this lesson? You mean the host of heaven needs to see this lesson, that we are part of a reconciliation lesson that even they must know and accept? That seems to be the case. For again, Paul, writing of Jesus, said, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. So those of you who aren't Christian celebrities, you're not in the limelight of man, you who wonder if you have any purpose or plan for your life, open your heart and eyes to see your audience. It's huge for the cosmos, is learning as they see how gracious and merciful God is to you, and they cheer when you respond. Each of our lives, no matter the stumbling, no matter the continuous need for cleansing and forgiveness, no matter the mountains of difficulties, discouragements, pain and failure, each of us plays, if you would, a starring role in this drama lesson. It's God's production Nothing is accidental. Nothing surprises him. Just hold on to your faith. He's made you a star in his blockbuster. And a crown of glory is your reward. Now may the Lord grant you peace in the midst of any storm and faith to trust him. Look for our next podcast and may you realize more of his grace today.